I guess I, to starting from, from my far left, I, 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 the, hands. <laughs> we'll start with you over there. It's um, on my blue stage. It's, um, I want to talk about digital policies. And first of all, I want to open up to the floor, really, by, well, sorry, to open up to the, to, the, to, the, to the panel by asking specifically, what would you do if you were given a blank sheet of paper uh, to hand to the Commission in, in two weeks' time, what would be top of the list? What are the three things that you might do? Mr. Vesberg, take it away. <laughs> Thank you for letting me start. Uh, I think, uh, first of all, I mean, we listened to Laura McAdam. He had a lot of good insights of a market that actually is in the forefront. So one thing that is very important, the technology revolution will just continue from here, and it will go even faster. We're going to have more people connect connected, more industries, using the technology for uh, an efficient delivery. That means that we also need to understand that that combination of different industries going together will just continue. So I think that when, when it comes to the digital agenda, I think that we just need to talk to the regulator to understand this is not separate industries. I mean, the telecoms, the media, the data come internet, those will come together as one. And that's very important when you think about regulation. And I think it was touched upon both from Lowell and also in earlier presentations. So that, I think, is the first one, to think about that. Uh, the second one is, of course, I mean, the majority of all connectivity in Europe and in the rest of the world will be wireless. That means that frequencies and frequencies harmonization has to, be very, has to be high on the agenda, because that will create a digital agenda for Europe and, of course, bringing efficiencies into Europe between different countries, but also as a unity. Uh, thirdly, uh, and I think we've heard it so many times, but we need to discuss that again, because as we now are getting into a digital age, where, which we call the network society, where not only people, but businesses and society will use the technologies, uh, we also need to think about much more policies going across different ministries, different type of functions of governments when it comes to policies. Simple things that was discussed earlier, healthcare will use digital economy, education, uh, we're going to see different type of uh, media entertainment using technology as well. So of course we want I, the policy makers to thinking about that. I mean, I work in the broadband commissions that is uh, coming out with uh, sort of the uh, ideas for when they come to the next step of using technology. One of the most important learnings is that we cannot have a single telecom unit or telecom ministry talking about it. We need uh, the head of uh, the Minister of Education actually discussing with the Minister of Telecommunication as well. And that's this cross-sectorial uh, discussions on, on using ICT. And that EU can definitely do as well. So mm -hmm. I think those three things can spur more innovation into Europe and, and, and a continuation of using this fantastic base of investments we have in Europe. Yeah, okay. very good. Uh, Mr. Ricky, um, coming from outside the industry, as, as you have done, you uh, relatively recently joined the telecoms industry, what are the key findings, would you say, uh, that you've, you've had so far in terms of how regulation is, is, uh, is changing and how it needs to change in the industry to make it work? Yeah, um, coming from outside, because you mean I've been in energy for a long time, and um, I would say there is a common path on how regulation should behave, uh, especially when uh, you are facing an industry who is in a disruptive trans transformation or a huge discontinuity, like uh, we just heard that we are. In, the, in whichever business we do, being that an OTT or a telecom or a service, uh, it, it is the same thing because technology is changing totally the environment. So, um, if the question is, uh, as a regulator, what I should do? Uh, I think regulation is not a, um, a fixed approach; is a is a continuous approach; is a changing model according to uh, the changings. Uh, of, of the business model that company has to do. And the main point of the regulation is to allow the infrastructure to develop such that people can have access. So you need to change the approach of regulation such we get rid of this uh, price competition only and we get into a favorable business model that nurtures investment. And we heard it from any uh, business player here. And this is paramount important. Uh, the second thing, uh, which is common with energy, I can say, 
uh, in energy, Europe, if I think to gas grids, was considered uninvestable because the overcomplicated uh, layers of regulation, 28 different countries, 20 different regulations, and so forth. So simplify uh, is, is the rule. You've got to simplify through the players, through the customer, according to what customer needs, that what you need to satisfy. If you don't simplify, investors don't come. And this means also certainty, a rule of law, because our regulation in each country has different uh, problems. Uh, I, I make my case in Italy, uh, we're facing issues that where investment at a, a regulatory risk uh, because of the uncertainty of the prices we're uh, about to invest with. And third and last is do it now. Uh, we, I've, I've heard speaking about programs ever. That's the problem of getting to execution uh, what is a parliamentary debate, but it's valid in any industry. And a, a digital agenda, I think, is a topic that has been here since 2010. We're still debating what to do. And, and in particular in this industry, which is very fast, uh, probably the, the business need is going to always stay ahead of the solution that you're creating with regulation. So that's mm -hmm. the key thing. Okay. And Ms. Lua, uh, would you agree? I mean, we, 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 the, 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 the eight of us are creating a manifesto for digital Europe here. It's a lot of responsibility. What would you uh, add, to the, uh, add to the list? I, I tend to agree quite a lot with uh, Mr. Recky. I mm -hmm. think we need very much to simplify uh, the whole regulation uh, agenda of Europe. It's very complex. You need a bunch of lawyers and regulators to find your way through. So I think as, as an industry, it's very complex to operate in the current uh, European environment. And I think the second one is to make sure that we develop a policy that favors the, the customers, the residential, the enterprise customer, so that we can again foster growth in Europe. And it's not only by regulating prices that you will get there. I think one of the key elements Europe has been using so far is a price regulation. I think it's a wrong way to regulate. I think you should foster competition, you should lighten up regulation so that companies can really try to compete on experience you give to your customers. And I think it's a much better way to compete than to regulate prices. Let us invest. Let us compete with each other on a level playing field, not only telco, also cable operators, also OTT, everyone together, we can compete with each other and we will probably give much more experience, much better services to customers because it will be about who is the best. And in that you need to give choice. You need to give choice for low price offers, you need to give high price offer with a lot of experience, a lot of services, and I think that's the way to go. It allows us to have a diversified offer going through all the price spectrum and making sure that we can compete with each other on what we can do best, offer the best service, offer the best network, and offer the best ecosystem, but in a level playing field where everyone is regulated, if needed, in the same way. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, th 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 thank you. And Ms. Nomad, uh, can I ask you the difficult question about competition? I'm coming to you as, as the representative from Deutsche Telekom um, on stage where we have had uh, the, the, the merger of, uh, of, of two of the companies in the sector. Do you think competition policy is moving in the right direction? Would you like to see it change any further than it is already, perhaps? Yes, slowly, in, yeah, in that case, I would say yes. But I think, and I want to come back to what Lowell said, we need a wake-up call for leadership. Europe-based technology leadership. We need to view us as a technology sector. And that requires a fundamental change of the philosophy of competition policy. It was said, light touch regulation, don't try to outsmart a dynamic industry as a good CEO. We'll never try to outsmart the innovative forces in our companies. It's a paradigm for good leadership, actually. 21st century great leadership. It was said, it's about scale. Technology sector is a global sector being connected. So as we say, we cannot optimize our churchyard yeah, and create different policies for 28 countries. With that, we will never go to scale. And if I combine that, it's about speed to scale. Yeah? It's about speed to scale. And here also we need to change the philosophy. And then there is the last thing. It's actually about accepting that none of us can do it alone but view it as a co-opetition of partnering. Pierre, I mean, our companies are collaborating pretty well in some aspects, yeah, we do. And I think it's about creating an open system in which everyone who is innovative can have a say, yeah? That's the spirit of the company, and I think it's, um, with that, frankly speaking, we have a long way to go to apply that spirit of leadership for 21st century regulators, as well as for us. 
Is the answer then to have a lighter touch form of regulation where you don't hear from them as much? I don't know. Is that, a, is that the answer? Yes, only if there is a misuse of things and not a fair playing field. Yeah, because in the end, it's about ensuring a level, play, even playing field and fair competition. And whenever monopolies, in whatever way they emerge in the entire industry, not only the operators, but also the content providers, the platform providers, then there must be intervention. Because that's not in the interest of the human beings of that continent if closed ecosystems form which contradict innovation and make it difficult for other companies to succeed. Mm -hmm. But apart from this, yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, <laughs> You're right. Mr. Kuhn, um, I want to come to you to talk about digital infrastructure and how regulations can be best suited to create the European, a cross-border, uh, uh, a pan-European digital infrastructure, which I, I would guess you would agree with the many people who say that that's what we need, some sort of uh, idea to join up the uh, continent to compete with the US and with China and other. First, what I would like to say is that what Lowell has told us is very inspiring. Because 10 years ago, the US probably was in a worse situation than Europe. So which means that if there is leadership, if there is a willingness to act, if there is alignment in between all the players, I guess we can make it happen. And I guess that it was a proof that it really can, uh, let's say, be unlocked. That's the first point. The second, listening to all of us, I guess we all know more or less what has to be achieved. Mm -hmm. I mean, there is no big new surprise. That has been debated for so many years that we know what has to be implemented. So now let's do it. I mean, that's about execution and about leadership. That's it. And so I guess that we can be optimistic with the new commission coming because it's clear that the new setup of the commission and also what has been phrased by the commission, in my view, shows that probably we, sh we will go in that, uh, in that direction. So then coming back to your point, I guess that if I was just to highlight a few things, but which have been said by all of us, I mean, achieving quickly the digital single market. Well, that's funny that, uh, let's say, in Europe, <laughs> we are not yet with a single market for data communications, which should be the first area where we should have achieved it. So that's then about spectrum, for example. I guess uh, that uh, it, was, uh, it was mentioned by ANS, which has to be now done. I mean, we have to stop this siloed approach in terms of spectrum, which refrain the rollout of services around, let's say, Europe, and which prevent the development of the new services. If you take big data regulation, which is new, let's be smart. Let's try to make it, let's say, at least at the European level, and let's also prevent to over-regulate what might become the raw material of the growth of tomorrow. Mm. I mean, data will be the raw material of the growth of tomorrow. Please, let's try to unlock this, the energy around, the, let's say, this space, and not sur-regulate this space before we have even created value in that mm. space. So that's what. Second around competition, the question which was, uh, let's say, uh, raised to, uh, to Claudia. I guess, let's phrase it, we have to abandon a consumerist-only approach for competition which has killed us, not only in telecommunications, but in most of, let's say, the sectors in which this regulation does apply. So we need to rebalance a short-term vision and a long-term vision. I mean, competition is about, of course, having the right prices, but also to make sure that the players will have the ability to invest in order to unlock the new services, as uh, Lowell has shown us. Second, the need to adapt relevant market definition. We are still regulating, let's say, competition as if we were 28 national domestic markets, where well, it should be at least Europe, and everyone has said that all the boundaries are vanishing. So we have to, to have a dynamic approach and not a static approach of the competition. So that's not very difficult to manage and to implement. Let's just do it. And then the third is ensure competi competitiveness becomes the DNA of uh, our policy makers. So again, I guess that some of us have spoken, for example, about normalization, which is extremely important in this industry. If we want to take some leadership in the future, I guess that, again, Lowell was referring to that 5G is coming and, uh, let's say, all those new technologies, standards will be essential, critical to be competitive in the world. So let's make it a strength of Europe or level playing field, which, is also, which has also to be in the DNA of our policymakers 
among the different players within Europe, but also in between Europe and the rest of the world. We should not be naive in that space. And so that's, let's say, three or four ideas, and I guess that my colleagues probably share those. So now it's really about implementation. So what I am really asking is for a new deal of telecommunication and making sure that the new commission is empowered and will deliver. Very good. And Mr. Lewitt, uh, a, a difficult question for you in that case. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to. Right? It's, uh, <laughs> should we, should we, should we, um, should we, sh should the commission scrap the existing proposal as it stands in, in digital in, on, the door, on the table, which has been debated by the, the member states? Should that just go uh, in the bin and start all over again? No, actually, I like that question because it's really um, uh, aiming at uh, what's going to happen now. You mm. know, we've heard. Uh, uh, from my colleagues, and I, I would completely subscribe to what has been said previously and also by others, we've heard all the key words, you know, putting in place an environment favorable uh, framework, uh, execution, as Michel mentioned, uh, putting us together, not missing the new threats, the new monopolies, and, and you know, fighting the fights of yesterday and, and not seeing uh, tomorrow's uh, uh, stakes. I would agree with that. So what do we do from now? It's exactly a question that I've asked to officials from the uh, Commission from this, in this transition period, if you want. Uh, I think the most reasonable thing to say is that we should probably work on the basis of the uh, uh, you know, first steps of the TSM, which have been um, uh, implemented or worked on or voted in the previous uh, uh, weeks and months. Uh, we should really, I think, limit uh, or uh, change what has been uh, voted on uh, the net neutrality issue, uh, which is an issue I'd like to, to say a few words on uh, maybe later on. We absolutely agree with the uh, general uh, perspective and, and the general objective of protecting everybody's access to uh, the Internet's contents. By the way, it's exactly what we sell. So, you know, we are selling access to everyone, as many customers as possible, to everything on the Internet. But let's not, uh, you know, get confused there are certain ways to protect the access and maybe not exactly what has been voted by the parliament. So <clears throat> I think we should start with this, uh, try to change that. Um, the, the roaming items, it's over, you know. This is done, this uh, thing of the past, let's not uh, be preoccupied with this. It's integrated in our accounts, we have digested this, you know. Let's, let's move on to something else. And let's move on to an environment, a framework, which really fosters investment. So what does it mean? It means that you have to enter into little details of light touch regulation has been said previously, giving one access probably uh, on each uh, regulated uh, fixed uh, uh, framework, one access by uh, regulation, and all the other access is negotiated based on commercial agreements. This is typically a simple approach. It will limit the number of uh, regulations. It will limit, someone was telling me this morning, about 7,000 people in Europe work uh, on this esoteric science of regulation. You know, speak a language uh, which not everybody really understands, even after years of practice. So maybe we should limit that, go back to the basics and to the basic uh, rules of business, and give exactly what Mr. Ottinger was saying, uh, I think, the day before yesterday, uh, give uh, private investment a chance to, you know, to, to roll out, to give the companies a chance to invest as much as they want, because they are interested in creating their own future and creating, to, creating tomorrow's revenues. It's, it's simply what we call for. Mm, mm. And, and, and in turn, what does that mean for the consumer, though? Because the, the, the counterpoint would be that, that this is a pro-industrial policy and the consumer will I th not benefit from it, ultimately, in the price think, of certainty. Yeah, I think one can be very blunt in saying that the European consumer is well served. Uh, the European consumer, in average, uh, uh, pays twice, uh, you know, half the price the American consumer pays to access uh, internet and mobile services. The American uh, telecom operations uh, generate about 86 uh, Euro, uh, dollars of revenue, average revenue per user, where we Europeans uh, have less than that in average. This is the situation we're facing. So the, the consumer in Europe has access to still very good networks based on good European uh, technologies, uh, has access to that at a minimum price. So he's been well served. We will continue giving him the best possible access, but the prices cannot go much more uh, lower. You know, you know, when you're close to zero or two euros in certain parts of Europe, you cannot go much more down. Mm. I think it's uh, as simple as that. Yeah. I think Mr. McAdam, you know, in that sense, benefits. But and I, I guess the only the thing that the U.S. benefits from is, is um, well, arguably three to four players. Uh, 
being in the market. And uh, uh, Mr. Bailey, you're a, you know, a consummate deal maker. I mean, how, how do you see the, 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 the competition environment changing in Europe? Do you think it needs to reflect that slightly more benign approach that the US regulators have taken in the past? Um, look, it's a, there is a very different approach in the US, clearly, and there are some very specific elements around that um, when it gets to when you talk with competition officials in, in the EU about how they look at setting the bar for competition, when they look at a market as to how they should decide you know, what bar needs to be maintained in terms of competition. It's something that we've talked about at length with people on, uh, both with companies here and with the regulators, where the US has a um, what they call a flailing firm concept, whereas Europe's failing firm concept is something that's almost impossible to apply. And it effectively assumes that um, competition, however you know, irrational from a corporate perspective, will continue forever. And I think that's something that needs to be addressed. There are some obvious markets where you have to assume that if you look three or four years out, things simply cannot continue as they are. And um, I think that the, the issue there would be that, um, to echo what was said before, you know, the rest of the world is moving incredibly fast. I mean, Lowell's speech was actually pretty daunting in terms of laying out how far ahead the US is already. And my fear is that we win some battles, as it were, and lose the war. And that by the time we get to a position where we have properly consolidated some markets that should be consolidated, we have not done enough on the pan-European single market agenda that Michelle and others talked about. And, and it's really only at that level that I think that we will begin to see um, scale and, and competitive um, ability that will compete with what's happening in the US and, frankly, the Far East as well. I mean, unfortunately, we can uh, have Mr. Gulliver here to talk to us today. I know he had to be elsewhere. But one of the questions I was going to put to him was, you know, HSBC is a customer of the telecoms market. I mean, how does it find dealing with the European uh, uh, telecom sector as opposed to, for example, Asia or the, or the US, where clearly you have large offices and many customers of your own, in fact? Mm. Do, you, do you find it a frustration uh, doing business in Europe at all? Um, well, I mean, I think I would say in that regard that actually you look at the European market now as being a pretty unique point in that I think customers, politicians, regulators, and the telecom providers all have the same objective at the moment. Mm -hmm. and, and that is, uh, certainly our focus as a customer, is on getting uh, the highest quality of service as far uh, around our footprint as we can. And there are many markets, unfortunately, where um, we can find it in some places but not others. Uh, I mean, even the centre of London. There are plenty of spots in the centre of London where you simply cannot get high-speed fibre access. Mm. Um, and within, within 100 yards of Harrods, which I'm sure Lowe will look at that and sort of scratch his head and say, how is that physically possible? Yeah. But it, it is, that's the reality of the situation today. And I think what we need to get is um, you know, a change of mindset that it's no longer a zero-sum game. They're all agreeing that the objective is to have the highest quality networks possible with the highest available service. That, it's like when you switch from a horse to a car. It's a different service. You need to be willing to pay more for that. It's mm. a completely different proposition. And that's certainly how we feel as obviously a very large customer. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much for that. And just, uh, I would like to, uh, at the moment, open up to the floor for the first time to see if we can get any questions and to hopefully get people thinking of questions for our, our great panel as well. So